Today I'm going to be giving a bit of a tutorial show and tell on how you can take a broken laptop and turn it into a portable uh, display and then within that display you could put whatever small thing you want and in my case I put a PS Vita but you can choose to put a, uh, a Roku or um, Fire TV, Android TV, whatever you want, gaming device or a streaming box, uh, it's up to you. But in my case, I chose a, uh, a PS Vita TV. Um, I, I do have a Vita, yes. And then sometimes the screen is too small for like the longer gaming sessions. So I would, um, sure, you could, you know, connect it to your TV, but sometimes the living room's busy. And uh, in that case, um, I kind of like this size where you could just sit on a sofa, have it in front of you, and then uh, just use a DualShock 4 and sit back and uh, relax and watch or, or play some of these uh, longer session games or these uh, visual novels or whatever, whatever RPGs you want to play. So we're going to take a closer look on how I was able to turn this laptop into a portable um, Vita. Uh, I think this may be the first Vita laptop that I, that I know of. I tried searching, I didn't see any others. Uh, this is my second attempt at it. The first one didn't go so well. In this section, we're gonna go over how to get started. So first, you have to find a laptop that doesn't work, but has a working screen. And then you take everything apart and you just throw everything away. Uh, in my case, uh, I thought I would be able to use pliers to get every little piece out, but it, it turned out that this is a metal shell. So I had to use a Dremel to cut everything out so that I would have enough space for my electronics. So throwing some pictures up just to show what that process was like. It was pretty messy, just be careful. And then after that, you wanna take apart uh, all the screws for the screen and what you want to do is look at the uh, there's a number a serial number or the model number of the particular LCD screen you're using and uh, when you have that number you have to search for that number plus the word LCD controller and uh, you, you you're gonna have to buy one of those and what that allows you to do is to take your display and give it an HDMI input. And that's the most important thing. Once you have that, an HDMI input, you can pretty much connect anything you want in here. So this HDMI controller um, has a cable that goes all the way into the, the back of the LCD, uh, which allows it to control the LCD. Just as an example, I'm showing you a different LCD board for a different screen. Uh, that's how it comes. This was the screen that I got. And once I got it out, that's the number you are looking for. And then if you flip it over, the connector for the LCD controller connects right there. And that is all you need to control that uh, LCD with uh, a board. Same thing over here. This needs a power supply and then an HDMI input right here. Once you have your LCD controller, you need to check what kind of voltage it needs. Uh, my particular one was able to use 12 volts. So I based all of my electronics off of 12 volts. So everything is being powered by a 12 volt supply. This is the, it's just a remote control, like a controller for this. It allows you to turn the LCD on and off. And then you also have some controls to change the brightness and contrast. So I just kind of put that over here and here's a cable that goes to the LCD controller for that. The other electronics we have, this is an audio amplifier. It powers uh, the speakers over here. And then this is just a basic a USB power supply. I am powering my Vita with a, a USB uh, cable. It's a PSP cable actually, just a USB, and then it turns it into a Vita port. This is a three cell lithium polymer battery. 
It has a Deans connector. I use this for my remote control planes. And I got this little connector that's a Deans to DC plug that just allows me to connect this into the power supply input of the console. On the back, I have a female barrel connector and I could either use a power adapter or I could use a battery. Um, I'll use the battery just for a few minutes to show you that it can be battery powered. Uh, this particular battery is not that big. It can power it for about maybe three hours. For the rest of the demonstration, I'll be using this power supply. It's a 12 volt, three amp, and it's uh, more than enough to power this. And that's the barrel plug it comes with. That female barrel connector is coming in here and then splitting into three parts. The first one is going into the LCD controller. The second one is going into the audio amplifier. And the third one is going into a USB power supply. All three of these components are ready to work on 12 volt. The signal from the PS Vita TV to the LCD controller comes through an HDMI cable, very much like this one. This is the ribbon HDMI cable. It's, it's really thin and flexible and it doesn't take a lot of space uh, inside the frame. Once the HDMI comes into the HDMI controller, uh, the video goes to the LCD, of course, and then this has an audio output as well. So I have the audio output with the 3.5 mm jack coming all the way into the audio amplifier. That takes the 3.5 mm and then it lets you connect two speakers. In my case, the speakers I've used are the laptop's own speakers. And uh, the cable for that is a very thin cable right there and uh, it just connects over there. The third barrel connector comes into this uh, USB power supply. It takes 12 volts in and gives you two USB power supplies. So I have a USB cable that turns into the PSP power supply. As far as the console itself, I haven't really fixed it in permanently. If I want, I could remove these cables and take the whole thing out. It's just fastened by these pieces of foam so that it doesn't move around or doesn't get damaged. I've already scratched it once. I don't wanna scratch it anymore. And I've also left space for the USB because I do need to charge the, the DualShock controller with it. And um, I also have space for the memory card if I need to take it out or if I need to take out the SD2 Vita. I got lucky with this LCD controller that it had a built-in 3.5 mm audio out but some of them may not have an audio out. In that case, you want a device such as this. Uh, it's an audio splitter. What it does is it has an HDMI input and then a pass through HDMI output, but then it allows audio to be extracted through 3.5 mm jack right there. And that's really it. It's just one barrel connector splitting into three, powering three components, an LCD controller for the LCD, audio output going into an audio amplifier, and then a USB power supply to power your console or whatever, whatever device you have. The screen on this laptop looks uh, washed out in my camera, but for your eyes, it, it looks pretty average. This is somewhere around a 720p screen. I think it's a 1366 by 768 screen, which is pretty close to the Vita TV's resolution, which is 720p. And then I was able to get everything to fit into the profile of the laptop, which allows me to close the lid pretty easily. I just used a little bit of foam protection before I close the lid. And then I have to, when I have to travel with it. This is a portable power supply. And uh, the only reason I have this here is because it has a power output. Uh, just to show you the efficiency of this thing. It uses around, I would say, 7 watts, even for a very heavy-duty game such as uh, Killzone Mercenary over here. So it's actually quite uh, power efficient. You also have the option of connecting an external HDMI device. Like, I connected this game console over here, and then uh, you can easily play any game you want with the uh, sound works and its skills as it should. 
So don't just think of this as a Vita machine. You could pretty much connect anything and have a portable display wherever you travel. Let's talk about some alternates. If you don't have a broken laptop you want to give new life to, if you don't want to tinker with stuff, just get one of these. It's a portable display. It's powered by USB-C and takes an HDMI. And then you have integrated speakers as well. And, and that's pretty much it. Uh, that that's all you would need if you if you have the money uh, I would suggest just go for one of these So you, you don't really have to go through all the trouble of uh, cutting up a laptop and buying all those things although it's a little cheaper and uh, more fun But uh, if you just want something functional just just get a all ready to go solution so in conclusion if you have a broken laptop you want to give new life to uh, you can go ahead, order a couple of parts. I tried to add as many links as possible to give you an idea of what to look for. Your laptop, your situation is going to be a bit different. I just like to tinker with things. I wanted to make this project because I thought it was cool. Uh, it uh, Maybe it doesn't make sense to you, but it, it made sense to me. Your use case may be a bit different. Overall, I'm satisfied how it turned out. Uh, it doesn't look pretty. I can't make things look pretty anyway, just functional. I'm gonna leave you off with footage from a couple of different games. Enjoy, thanks for watching.